we have here on this new carbon boot lid with its integrated spoiler, a CSL badge. It's been a while since we've had one of those, 20 years. So to make up for it, BMW has attached a lot of them. There are badges everywhere. Sills, grill, wheel, console, splitter. There are even illuminating ones on the seat backs. What we have here is a car constantly reminding you what it is. The thing is, I'm not sure it knows what it stands for itself. Coupe Sports Lightweight. I'm sure taking 100 kilos of weight out of an M4 is a real engineering achievement, but this is still over 1.6 tonnes, and that's before we get onto the sheer visual heft of this thing. Now, the philosophy of CSL is road first, track second, but since we have a track the other side of those doors, let's start there. But before we go too fast in it, we need to talk about this car, because so far, I'm not sure about it. Look, we'll break it down here. And it's on a Cup 2R tyre, so super sticky rubber. And it feels good, but it doesn't feel night and day different to a regular M3 initially, when you're just going at good pace rather than great pace, because it doesn't feel that much quicker because the engine's basically the same, and you're not really aware of it feeling that much lighter either because 100 kilos when you're still at 1625 kilos ain't that much and that makes me wonder whether the m4 was the right car for the csl treatment because in my head m2 that's where you want it to be now m2 csl and we know they did one as a prototype that sounds terrific to me but this looks and feels initially like a big car but it does ride firmly that's the thing you're most aware of instantly is that it feels a hard car and yet it's on these michelin cup to our tires which are full on but how does a csl differ from a gts that's what i still can't quite get my head around because the only thing i can really tell different is that a gts gets a roll cage and a rear wing, and the CSL doesn't. But on road, this CSL, it's not quite what we thought it would be. Again, it largely comes down to the tyres. On the more weatherproof Pilot Sport 4Ss, the CSL is quite ragged and unsettled. The Cup 2Rs, even when not at furnace temperatures, have unbelievable precision. The nose is phenomenally responsive, diving into corners as if it's front mid-engine. But confidence comes from the chassis, not the steering, which offers little more feel than the regular M3. Nevertheless, the CSL covers ground with absurd speed, like a Nissan GTR with half the driven wheels. But that doesn't mean it's nailed the brief. Yes, it's a more hunkered down, grippier, angrier and faster M4, but it feels like an incremental gain mostly owed to chewing gum tyres. There's not enough extra engagement and despite BMW's claims, it feels like a race car that's been sent on a road mission. It doesn't feel supremely interactive on road. It felt a bit big, a bit heavy, a bit clumsy. I mean, your rivals are things like GT4 RSs, that matters. Right, charging on down the main straight, it's a quick car, that's for sure. And then we'll bury it under the brakes. Right, right, that gearbox, that's the biggest issue. The gear changes just don't ping home. It's because it's an eight-speed auto rather than a twin clutch. And that, I think, is the biggest shame about the CSL, that they didn't take the opportunity to change that gearbox. But through the long stuff, it feels really stable and under hard braking, that's quite exotic and look you give it a bung here -hoo -hoo -hoo. that's pretty full on actually there's not many other cars here i dare do that in and it feels good under brakes actually as well so this thing is painting lines in new places on this circuit Wow. 
But that front end is so grippy, you're never gonna get understeer. You just get on the throttle and you start to feel it edge wide and get keen and wanna be involved. And it's really engaging. Oh my God, it's a... So even at that, that's 100 mile an hour through there and you're on the power in the top of fourth and you can feel it starting to edge wide. Now the tyres are up to temperature and it's really singing along. This feels like quite a ride. It's got so much torque, this engine. <laughs> Even on these Cup 2Rs, it's giving them a fair bit to do. Look, we can keep it pinned through the really fast stuff. That's fifth gear flat out, 130 miles an hour through there. And it does consume the braking zone, but I still don't get quite what makes this a CSL and not a GTS. But I tell you what, as a track car, it's an absolute weapon, actually. But initially, I thought this felt like it had too much grip for the chassis to cope with. Actually, that's not the right way to look at it. What it's got is an astonishing amount of front end bite and grip, and then you just play with it at the back. You need to be a confident driver to get the most out of it. It's a lot of fun. It's really involving and absorbing and I've got a lot of time for it. There's nothing else here that I'm as confident tipping into a hundred mile an hour corner and just letting the back end creep wide. It's, they've done a lovely job with it. It feels so grippy, so stable, no matter what you're doing, whether you're trying to go straight or whether you're trying to get a bit of angle out of it. Really strong under brakes. But this, I have to say, this gearbox, it's fine for the upshifts, but I really don't think it's got a place in a sports car. The CSL badge has real resonance, but the car itself has no clear idea of what it wants to be. If they wanted it to be good on road, the M4 was probably the wrong starting point. It's too big and too heavy. They should have started with the M2. On track, it's mighty. We really enjoyed it. That's where it comes alive and performs best. If that's what you want from a CSL, fair enough, dive right in. But we hoped for something with a broader range of talents. 